you get a good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of On the Table. I'm your host, my name is Jimweka, or simply Chimweka. Now, hey, it's been quite the eventful week, eventful weekend. Happy Easter weekend, by the way. Yeah, what a week we've come from. Uh, and for me, mean, I mean that in different ways. The events that have taken place in terms of emceeing events, it's been a busy week, but also with the reaction to last Sunday's interview where I hosted Entrepreneur, philanthropist, social media personality, uh, Zach. And a lot of things have come out from that. It's even maybe become a meme, sticker, all those things. But I'll give my honest reaction to what happened and what has been said. I'm going to give my honest position on that on the show today. But also, I want to focus today on women, the Zambian women in entertainment and focusing on the ones that I've hosted before on the show. I will admit, I haven't hosted too many females on the show, and it's something that we need to work on. Uh, last year, and I think the year before, we did have a women's special month where we had females back to back, back to back. Uh, this year, we didn't do it. And it just always reminds us that we do need more females in this, in this business. So uh, it's something that we also recap on. And looking at the positive things that these females who've sat on this show had to say when I interviewed them. So, you know, obviously, uh, interviewed Mizukanji, we've interviewed the likes of Cleo Ice Cream, Tale um, Mwanza, Ruth Roni. So, we'll just recap on some of those uh, statements of what has been said um, in the recent interviews. But also, it's Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, as others know it. So, you've probably seen a lot of images of WhatsApp statuses, Facebook, he is risen, he is risen. Yes, he is risen. So, obviously, for the Christians, this is a very important day after the um, Good Friday where the crucifixion of Jesus is celebrated, obviously, because, again, the sins get to be washed away through, through that. So, uh, just to get to remember that from Good Friday, uh, uh, remembering his crucifixion by the Romans at Calvary. So we, we get to remember that during this particular Easter weekend. And in fact, tonight there's going to be a special show happening on Diamond TV at 22.30 hours, so you can look out for uh, that particular show. Look, trust me, I'm getting into the Bible now. I eh? can go into my preaching stage. I can do that. But hey, let's uh, also look at what happened last week. In the Christianity space, people look at what Judas did, the kissing, uh, kissing Yesu, and uh, eventually selling him or getting some, some, what was it? Was it gold or coins? Well, anyway, he, he pretty much sold Jesus. And Judas thing has become a very popular word. And it seems quite synonymous with some of the events from last week after what Kidist had shared on our social media platforms that really got a number of people talking. So Kidist wrote, and I quote, as Kidist Kifo's management team, also from my management team, but uh, on her page, we would like to communicate our concerns regarding the consistent mention of Ms. Kifo's name in radio and TV interviews by other celebrities. It has come to our attention that such mentions do not align with Ms. Kifo's preferences. We kindly request that celebrities refrain from referencing Ms. Kifo in their interviews. Additionally, we are aware of the untrue statements being made about Ms. Kifo during these interviews. We urge celebrities to exercise integrity and honesty in their public statements. It would be very sad if we exercise our right to come out and dispute the statements you claim you have, you, you have been made with evidence that is, or you claim have been made with evidence that is. This is where now you remember your teacher of English in comprehension and all those things. We believe that a successful interview can be conducted without the need to mention Ms. Kifo, and we appreciate your cooperation in this matter. And then she goes to say, Zach Cosmas. ATC. That's how that ends, right? And it's interesting because both of the names mentioned have featured on, on the table in uh, recent episodes. First of all, uh, so much, I have so much respect for, for Kiddist. In fact, I, I rarely even call her Kiddist when we speak. I call her Mrs. Mrs. Mlenga. And even before she wrote this, I'll be very honest with you, we did have a conversation. We, we spoke on the phone. Um, she gave me a call. We spoke. And we I talked about a number of issues. She asked me a few questions about what had been happening. And it's not the first time we've met. We've met before. Uh, we just never really mentioned, but we've met before, and we've talked about this whole issue of people mentioning her. And, and I've always explained to her what really go, uh, gets to happen. And she understands. She is, she, at least she's been very understanding of what's been um, you know, going on and what has been said. So even when this was put out, I think it was put out a day or two after we spoke, so I was not very surprised. In fact, I was actually even... Happy that she said it out herself because, I mean, if I went out and said it, or, which I would never do anyway, 
it would have been a different conversation. But she went out and said it on her own, and she put it out there for people to see. Even though she deleted the post eventually, but uh, at, at least people got to see what, what she has to say about some of these issues. So that is the first thing. But let's also recap on what some of these individuals said, starting with Cosmas, a.k.a. Logic. Here's what he had to say when he featured on On the Table. But in Shawi, Tepo in the Kuma, Kuma Ngoma Award from the other camp. Yeah, you are a traitor. What, 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 what? That's tension. Hey, you can't. I was like, oh. So, the, the, by the other camp, you mean <laughs> what, the Olios? I think about the Olios. <laughs> yeah, the wife shouted at me at the Ngoma Award. Your mom's wife? In 2022. I sent you out. We don't even get along anymore. Um, probably because of the same, but people need to understand that we're creatives and we. I don't want to. I, 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 I didn't rise by taking down others. And that statement answers your question, your previous question. I didn't rise and by taking down others. So mm. I'm not a young man that believes in the downfall of others. Being my 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 rise, mm. no. So I have so much respect for your maps and his wife, and all the things she may have said to me. I respect that because that's how she feels. That's how she thinks. I'm not a traitor. She called me that, um, but they must know. I listen to your maps music every single day of my life. It uplifts me. So. And on a personal level, the relationship we had, I respect all of that because it makes us uh, unique and, and friends. But if they chose to stay away because they think I am doing something against them, it is their decision to make. At the end of the day, if I died today, the world will continue. You know what I mean? If, uh, if anybody dies, following the people will come on my funeral and cook shima, they will sing, cry. Uh, share my property clothes. The following day they move on with their life. Like I never existed. So I'm not afraid of losing friends anymore. I'm not afraid of losing colleagues. I'm not afraid of losing um, fellow celebrities. But one day it's going to make sense. Because I, I don't rejoice in people being enemies. I don't rejoice in people hating each other. It doesn't make me happy. My prayer is that one day God will speak to them and, and hopefully is going to guide. So I'm not in this business to bring down anyone. No. Mm, not wanting to create an enmity, right? Well, it's, uh, it seems like uh, one party is not pleased with what was said on, on, on one end and... Could that be untrue, as Kirist was, was saying? Um, a lot of questions have come out from that and, and what really could have happened. And, you know, when guests come through and they make one particular statement, we'll, I will tell you this, we do get in touch with the other party to make a clarification, to respond if they want to. It's just that sometimes some of these people don't want to respond, and that's what sometimes gets to happen. But for Kirist, don't worry, we, 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 have, we have been in touch, like I've mentioned, so um, even her putting out that particular statement was just her way of somehow responding. I know she could have said more, and her management, I guess, felt that that was enough for her to put out, and eventually it was taken down for reasons best known to them. So Cosmos had his own version of, of, of events, and I guess from the other party there's another version of events. But what has been the topical conversation from this is what Zach had to say on the recent interview. Now, this one surprised a lot of people because you'd think, okay, conversation about Kiddies, your maps from Zach, ah, it's all cool. Nothing is, nothing is a problem there because they're on the same team, same page. And here's what he had to say in the recent interview last weekend. So, so Kiddies had an appearance at the keg, and, um, the, you know, I think one of the closest people to, 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 to the family at the moment could be me and maybe a few others who are maybe not socialites so uh, i was even having a chat with maps to say oh she's having an appearance maybe i should go and beef up support and mm, whatnot so mm, maps was mm. very cool with it he gave me the blessing and even when kiddies's phone went low maps and kiddies were actually chatting on my phone 
Wow. I gave Kiris my phone, chatting on my phone. Kiris was checking up. How is it going? Are you ready for your next event? That's the type of kid. That's, that's the type of personality Kiris is. She's she's very mm. caring and very uh, keen to detail. So they were chatting on my phone. You know, checking up. Where are you? How is it going? How is it that side? So initially, when we went for that appearance, when we went for the appearance for Keg, Yomaps' young sister was with us. Mm. There was another friend of ours, Boston, who is very close to Yomaps. And then also, Kid is his friend. So it's just that me and her, we are on the limelight and we take a picture, we're doing a dance together, it went viral and whatnot. So Kidist actually has um, uh, a relationship with my, with my wife. So mm. all of those allegations, they didn't really matter. At some point, I got broken. It, it phased me out. And guess who, caused, who called me? Because he noticed that ah, this guy is going down the drain. Mm. Maps codes. Bro, I've seen what's going on. You don't need to worry about that. That attack that is happening, it's got nothing to do with you or kidist. People just don't want me to perform properly where I am. So be calm. We've seen these allegations happen before. It has happened to me. Now it's happening to my wife. Be calm. I know the friendship that you and my wife have. Um, don't worry about it. By the way, the, I've received so many questions about that, the laugh and what exactly I was, I was laughing at. Um, but it, it, was a long, it was a long story. It was, a, it was a long story. It's not what people think it was. It was uh, completely about, about, not completely something else, but it's, uh, it's not what some people may have been thinking I was, I was laughing at. You never know. Maybe something happened in the background and you get to laugh. But anyway, uh, away from that. So he had shared his events of what had happened when he went there and he says he received a call. But you see Kiddis' statement, it seems like what was said was, was untrue and many were surprised. Really? I thought these guys were on the same team. Does this mean the friendship is over? So many questions have come through from that. But even for Zach, I mean, you talk about a number of things. It's, you'd predict that, yes, people would pick out the whole Kiddis, Mizukanji aspect of things. But he spoke a lot about philanthropy, what he's doing for a lot of kids out there who are going through different health conditions, his business side. There's a lot to learn. I learned a lot as well from, from that conversation. And people may not pick those particular aspects out. And we've come to realize that that's somehow human nature. That's the society we live in. Uh, people go for, 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 for different aspects of, of the conversations. But there's a lot that can be looked out for. And when you watch it on the Diamond TV Zambia YouTube channel, uh, if you look out for the interview, you get to learn a lot beyond uh, these friendships and relationships that uh, um, the individuals in question have. So a lot was said from that particular interview that Zach did Put out so it's not anything about trying to end friendships i mean it was said and that's the thing about these interviews people come through and they say what they say and how it gets to be reacted to becomes another conversation and you really can't dictate that uh as, as a host in terms of what the guest is going to say it's a platform they speak out and things move accordingly so um and according in this case it's from what they have put out themselves so that 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 is around the zach conversation and and the interview that we had, where he spoke about um, Kiddist, uh, your maps, among others, including his, his, his own wife, uh, something that a lot of people did not know about. But hey, we're all about celebrating women today. Um, and part of what Zach talked about was a very controversial post that people felt was directed towards, um, some people felt was directed towards Mizukanji. But Mizukanji has been a guest on the show, and, and almost like she's responding to that, what we talked about is comments that she gets to receive from various people out there who say whatever they want to say about her and here's what she had to say in reaction to that for me i understand that you know social media can break you or it can build you i've been broken by social media before and uh, the only option i have now is for social media to build you so what i've been working on is something that i can make money out of there are certain people that wouldn't want to associate themselves with certain individuals because of how they carry themselves or what they do on social media. For me, it has been about building this brand. Who is Mizukanji? Mm. What is Mizukanji interested about? Obviously, when you ask a lot of people, that's only what is Mizukanji interested in? Mizukanji is a hustler. Obviously, she's interested in business. I want everything to do with business. I want to learn. I want to improve myself. That's what Mizukanji is about. Mm. I'll not manage to wake up every morning and say, oh, what did you say? You said Mizu has a big head. Oh, even you. I will win it. Shut. You know, it's time wasting. It's time consuming. 
Let's, I, I would rather use my time to think about, okay, what can I do next? I'm sure of late you've seen me attend a lot of conferences. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just want to improve myself. I want to make myself better. That's what I want. Mm. I don't, people are struggling. No, people are struggling. And they're not struggling financially. They're not just struggling financially. Mm. Even, you know, they are, they are, they've got mental issues. They've got things that are troubling them. And they just want to pour it out on another person. Somebody will only be bitter with another person if there's something bothering them. Mm. I don't want to be a victim of someone else's bitterness. And then I waste my time and respond to whatever. So that's the very reason why. Even if somebody... Uh, there'll be Mizukani. There'll be people talking about Mizukani all the time. Yeah. There'll always be people trying to, you know, if you say something, they want to interpret it. They want to say, okay, she was not supposed to say this. Yeah. There are certain times where I've, I've, people have pointed fingers at me and said, no, oh, she's bitter because, you know, she can't even congratulate. She can't do ABCD. I've done a lot of things in my life. Okay, I've done a lot of, and I'm still doing a lot of things. I'm working on myself on a lot of things. I will not manage to wake up and justify myself and say, okay, please, people, this. I'm not living my life for anybody else. I'm mm. living my life for my kids. I'm living my life for my family, and I'm living my life for. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> and trust me, you know, um, I, I have just chosen what to focus on, yeah. and it has really helped me. Trust me. And, and I wonder how you manage, because, I mean, with what you've said, if you still have people who try to drag you into the whole, especially your maps, kiddies, this and that, sometimes you ever get, because of how often people want to do this, do you ever get tempted to just, maybe this one, I mean, just this one, I'll respond and I'll stop again. And you know, the funny thing, uh, the funny thing with me, yes, I'll see a number of things because I've got, you know, friends, family who are yeah. on Facebook, some women forward it to me, oh, this is what is happening, but I choose not to. And must I be think hard, I've isn't mastered. It? No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Because trust me, my life is about splitting my time. I wake up in the morning, I have to make sure the kids go to school. You know, I have to make sure things are running okay at home. I have to come to this business. I have to go to my mm. to my mm. other businesses. I have an office, you know, where we do the marketing and everything. I haven't been to the office for the past one month. I don't have time. Mm. So for me waking up each morning, I have a lot of things that I need to do. I cannot manage. But how does this work also? Because you have a brand and you have a reputation mm -hmm. that, you, that you want to keep. And like you said, some people want to interpret things in their own way. You know, you maybe post a picture with receipts and they'll say, no, she's trying to be like this other person. But, but then how, how does it work for your own brand? Because people would easily assume things, but you want to clarify. So does this mean you just let whatever people want to think go ahead, even though it might not exactly be true? I don't really have time to justify myself. I don't have time to justify myself. If somebody's going to say this is a, a port, then it's a port. That's their business. That's their interpretation. Because personally, I know this is a glass, this is a cup. So I would not manage to try and change somebody's mindset. If you're going to interpret it in a certain way, for me, it's engagement at the end of the day anyway. Mm. Even if somebody comes and insults me, that's the reason why my block list, there's nobody that I've blocked on my page. Because I want people to express themselves. It's also good for business. Mm. Let them express themselves. When I go and check my engagement, I'll find there are 15 million people engaging <laughs> on the page. It's good for business. Yeah. So for me, I'm, I'm really a person who is focusing on the, on the bigger picture. Yeah. I don't have time to. At the end of the day, one, you know, someone would say, why are you drinking water? Because the other person was drinking water. You're not supposed to do that. So there are certain things that I cannot afford to just leave because... No, this person says I'm not supposed to do this thing. Mm. I'm supposed to do it. I cannot manage. So do you think that also because of everything you've experienced since you, you came into the public eye has made you have a thick skin? And that's why you're at this point now where you can literally just ignore things and, and, and move on. Okay, it hasn't been easy. Mm. At first, it was very, very difficult. At some point, I almost committed suicide. Mm. Yeah. And uh, I committed, I almost committed suicide because of what was going on. I was paying attention to what people were saying. Mm. At some point, somebody posted, okay, the most ugliest. I think that was the first award I got where I was awarded the most ugliest person on social media by a certain page. And, uh, you know, it got to me. I was really, really depressed. I felt bad. I almost committed suicide. Was it the time you you drove? Yeah. But, but you know that story, but also question that story saying you put food tank in the car yeah. and then you, you drove to go and because kill how was, yourself. How, how's, the, how's the car going to, you know, get into flames if you didn't have fuel? <laughs> <laughs> you really no, thought about yeah, it, huh? I thought about it, but mm. I was at that point because I allowed what people were saying about me 
to get to me. Mm. But what solution did I, you know, come up with? I worked on myself. Yeah. And working on myself has really helped me because I know who I am. I know away from my net worth, I know what Mizukanji is. Mm -hmm. And not just any Jim and Jack can come and tell me things and I'll become affected now. This time around, it's not possible. I am built mm. with gold. Not Woo. even copper, no. Woo. <laughs> yeah, so you need a lot of heat to melt the gold. Uh, so I really don't pay attention, trust me. It's not even about thick skin, but I know who Mizu is. You're yeah. going to tell me my forehead is big, my head is big. I know. It's DNA, come on, what do I do? My father had a big head. My sisters have big heads. My brothers have bigger heads. Mm -hmm. So that will not get to me. If someone is going to tell me something about myself that I know I cannot change, mm -hmm. I will not be affected. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the past months, you know, people would talk about, oh, my you know, she drinks too much, she does ABCD, she does ABCD. There are certain things that, yes, you sit down and it's not everything that you can ignore because mm -hmm. certain things will come and people will want to see a better vision of you. And trust me, I've worked on myself in a lot of ways. I'm mm -hmm. a whole different person now. So even if this negativity comes in, you, say, you can't manage to bring me down. Yeah, you can't bring a good woman down, right? So. That's the conversation we had with Ms. Ukanji last year. And I think, true to that, she's really controlled herself as much as she can to stay away from some of this social media drama. I, 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 know, I know she sees it, but she stays away from that. And I think she's really grown a thick skin over the years. It's not easy. I don't think it's easy, but she has been trying her best. Same for Kittis. And I was telling Kittis this in the, in the phone, call, interview, phone call I had with her, rather, that she's also done a very good job in trying to stay away from some of this, this drama. It's not easy, but they're really trying their best, and you can see that, that there's, there's growth in that regard, uh, despite all the temptations and uh, the feeling to just want to uh, respond. Even though I know Mizukanji recently, even with the whole thing with Diali, she kind of responded a bit, but overall, she has been trying her best to stay away from, from that. And we'll continue celebrating the women in entertainment, precisely the ones who are featured on this show, On The Table. And um, there's a lot we'll be talking about. Talemwanza in motherhood. She recently took her son to South Africa. She's pushing his dream to become a footballer, which is absolutely commendable. We had a very emotional interview. And we'll speak into that. And also her recent good news regarding the nomination of her TV show, Talemwanza Scripted. So that's coming up. And also we'll be having a conversation with Cleo Ice Queen on culture and how Zambians embrace culture or lack thereof. So more coming up after this break. Welcome back. You're still watching On The Table on an Easter weekend. Resurrection Sunday is today. He is risen. Now we continue also celebrating women because March is known as Women's Month. Uh, let's not forget that. And uh, before the break, I did mention we are celebrating the women who have been on the show. Because, uh, I mean, there's so many women to celebrate, but we're going to focus on the ones that we have interviewed on On The Table. And I did make a promise that we'll do more this year in inviting and speaking with uh, the different women. One of the uh, women we've had on the show is Mtale Mwanza, more than once actually. And the last conversation that I had with Mtale, we spoke, it was quite an emotional one because she touched on her, her son and also her, her sister's son, who's also her son traditionally. And uh, yeah, that made it quite uh, uh, emotional. But even with her son, of late she's been pushing her son to chase his dream as a footballer. And she's been doing this for some time now. And it looks like uh, there's more efforts being made in realizing this dream for her son. And she also even spoke about her reality show, Telemwanza Unscripted, which just a few days ago got nominated at the Africa Magic Viewer's Choice Awards. Um, so over in the overall best uh, series uh, category. And here she's up against some West African uh, shows. I think there's GH Queens, there's uh, Real Housewives of, of Lagos, among others. So this one is not op open for public voting. It's not open for public voting. However, it's just to keep our fingers crossed that uh, Zambia takes this one through Mtele Mwanza. And we spoke about her reality show as well as her children 
in this interview? The economy is a bit funny. <laughs> so I, am, I don't know if I'm really, really in a position to like employ so many people. So mm. I want to do it at a point where I feel comfortable because I don't want to start struggling to pay people salaries. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So right now, it's just Hancho, and I'm building his soccer career. Okay. And I'm trying to focus on that. I think you saw when Ronaldinho came. Yeah. Yeah. I had to buy tickets so that my son could meet him. Uh, with Patrick Clivert and you know I had to have you know all these conversations with the Barca coach and things like that so yeah. I'm really just focused on Mwape and building his his, his soccer career yeah. I, like I'm 100% in there as um, when you look at other talent not yet 2024 then uh, are, you, are you co-managing Chandanake? I wouldn't really call it co-management but mm. yeah I mean we have a <laughs> yeah we have that arrangement yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so meeting with Hancho, you're, you're almost doing the whole uh, burner boy, uh, mama burner type of, uh, yeah. but for football. Yes, I will be all in, hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Chandanake are managed by Jereo. Yeah. Yes. Percent. And then I, yeah, like okay, well, like you said, co-manage. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm in there. Mm. Yeah. You had a very interesting uh, reality show, Telemwanza Unscripted. Thank you. Season one, very interesting ending to the season. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> are there any talks so far about season two? Mm, we'll see. Okay. But did you enjoy giving that side of you, that other side of you that maybe people didn't get to know? I did, but there's certain things that I really, really just would have not put on social media, like my relationship, for instance. Like, mm. that's one part of my life which I really love to hold. Like, those are cards I hold tightly to my chest. And then having to put it out there, the conversation to have my boyfriend, how we want to have a baby, and then all of mm. a sudden, like, he just did some dumb mm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to... Like, when people come at me, I want them to come at me for fashion or for what I said or how I dance or if I'm, you know, like, doing some mm. random stuff. But not... Not things that speak to my heart. Like, I don't want you guys to enter my relationship and start asking me questions. Oh, so are you still, is, is he still there? Are you still dating? Mm, mm. You know, did you take him back? Like, I don't want to discuss that. So that part I didn't enjoy. But it's a reality show, so I had to put it out there. Yeah. Otherwise. Well, although the last episode seemed a bit confusing. Like, it was a Chilanga Muri. You know, what, what was it? It was a, what no. was going on? Like, people bringing, it was just a lot happening. Like, <laughs> just explain the last episode for us like what what were you trying to tell us so they were bringing plates yeah but usually it's very quiet exactly but and your aunt said that in the in the episode yeah but i didn't want to quiet because i've received plates before like twice before in my life mm -hmm. these were going to be the third ones if they had come <laughs> they were going to be the third ones yeah and it's very boring our tradition is so boring like there's nothing colorful so this time i said you know what I'm Mutale Mwanza. I'm going to dance. We're going to have drums. I don't care. I just want to do my own thing. Mm. Then the ladies in the back were cooking and they were having a good old time. I said, let me join. They were like, yeah, actually, it's a tukufunde. After, okay, again, I'm chupo. You understand? Mm, so mm, my family mm. was uncomfortable because, like, in reality, I mean, realistically, takwa woku chitafidia. But mm. I just did it for the fun of it. And I, I really was just in the moment. And I also just wanted to have fun. I just said, guys, let's dance. I love to dance. Like, when I did in Salam, it's not a funeral. Mm -hmm. Like, dance, let's enjoy. And then I was there dancing. But my uncle didn't like that. My aunt didn't like it. They were like, Takwa wa fubach thief. Takwa. But I just said, yeah. Rebel. What was it like even convincing your, your family to, to be a part of the show? Your mom, like, with everything that was happening, what was it like convincing them? I mean, I've always been in the spotlight. Yeah. My mom was a bit hesitant at first, but she was like, oh, okay. Mm. Um, Aunt Gertrude, Aunt Gertrude was, was, was happy about it. Aunt Annabelle was very happy. My son is very reserved. He was like, okay, you know. He had agreed excitedly, mm -hmm. right? But when reality sunk in he was like are we really doing this mm -hmm. so even my mom like even my family like in the beginning it's like oh okay you know okay yeah when it started happening then they were like okay that we're really doing we're this. really doing yeah you know so how did it work did you like have to pay them <laughs> how does it work when the family involved like okay you get something as well yeah i have to pay people including mom and aunties of course i mean the other people you have to 
I mean, they're obviously not going to ask for money. Yeah. Right? But, yeah. Oh, like you just find money a way is, of, of money is money is given. Obviously, I didn't give my son money. Mm. I have his money. I, I kept it, and he'll get it when he's eighteen. <laughs> oh, you're doing the typical mom <laughs> thing, you know? You get the money, you get it when you're older. Yes, okay. Yes. But I must tell I think I think you're doing a pretty good job in raising him. Thank you. Pre doing a very good job as far as the media space is concerned. Uh, TV, the TV gigs you're getting. Well done to you, and congratulations for, for all the hard work you're putting in. Thank you. And, and with that said, I would like to know, because uh, if I'm not mistaken, you started off your professional mainstream media career on radio, Flavor FM. You made me cry. I hate you. <laughs> Can well, I have a tissue? <laughs> Any tissue around? I hate you, Chimoyka. <laughs> Cut. I shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> But uh, you, you started off. You started off on on, on radio. Um, any intentions on, on getting? I know you get this question a lot. Or maybe should I should give you a bit more time? Are you okay? Um, I just need a <laughs> a napkin. She's oh, she's going to get one. Okay. Yeah. What was your question? Yeah. So so uh, radio radio. Uh, do you plan on getting back on radio? Because obviously. You also did an amazing job when, when you were on radio here <laughs> Thank in Osaka. You. So any plans on getting back? Um, I would love to own a radio station, yeah. Oh. <laughs> M Nation FM. Oh. Yeah. You, you, you really call it that? Yes. <laughs> Don't give like a generic name, you know, like maybe MTV Zambia <laughs> or MMTV. Okay, that's how you know that I'm just, that was so random. But I would, I would have a radio, I would love to own a radio station. But yeah. I would love to own a TV station as well. I think both. Yeah. I'm more of a TV person now, but radio would be second. If I ever did any, if I had to choose between the two, I would start with a television uh, station and then I would branch off into radio. Ah, okay. All right. Yeah. So, so now TV, TV has become your main love. Yeah. I mean, it's always been, remember... <laughs> Yes, radio with Flavor FM, and then yeah. I did Kumwesu. Kumwesu yeah. When I used to do Kumwesu, I told myself I need to, to have a TV station. Yeah. There's a lady um, who... You can, you can bring it over, Koto. So it's no problem. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um... Yeah, you're talking about Kumwesu, uh, time you're in Kumwesu. Yes, there's a lady... Is it... Her name is Mo. She used to do a show called Moments with Mo. Yes, yes. Mo. Yes, yes. yes and then yes, she yes. owns... Does she still own Ebony TV? I used uh -huh. to... I was so inspired by that. Because yeah. she started with a TV show, and then it just... The, radio, the, the TV station just blew with Ebony. Yeah. So I thought to myself, wow, this is something I love to do, like content. A lot of content creation. But yeah. I just... I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm more television inclined than radio. Nice, nice. Yeah. But M Nation TV. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> Not everything is M Nation. <laughs> I'll probably think of a smarter name. Yeah. Where do you even get Cecilia? Where's Cecilia from? Cecilia. That's my um, my mom's mom. I was oh, named okay. after her. Oh, so you're also Cecilia? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. So I'm telling Cecilia. But my dad named named me Melissa, so that's the one on my NRC. My uh, Mutale Melissa Mwanza. Then oh, Cecilia okay. is my yeah. My grandma was uh, Cecilia Mutale Pembanyali. Yeah. Yeah. So I took my grandma's name. Yeah. But I don't use Cecilia a lot. Okay. Yeah, the other mutales in the family do. Because ah. you know how, yeah, like my, my mom's brothers, they mm -hmm. all have mutales in their family as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like a whole bunch of mutales. So it's like mutale girl, mutale yeah, big, mutale exactly. small. Mutales to see that. Ah, mutale boy. Like, yeah. yeah, there's a whole bunch of mutales. Nice, yeah. nice. Mutale, always remember we love you. Thank you. And we wish you all the best. Pray for me. Yes, yes, yes. I think I think that's the biggest thing we should yeah, be saying right I've, now. Yeah, if I've never said this, like when when a person is about to die, do you think they know that they're going to die? Mm. Mm. I know as Africans we get quite uh, shaken when we talk about death and all of that. But I mean, Easter Sunday on on Friday is when we're talking about Jesus being crucified, eventually dying, then rising today. Uh, and she did talk about praying for her. So those who are, Went to church today. We'll be going tomorrow as well. Uh, remember to say a prayer for, for, for everybody, really, within the entertainment space. Everyone, really, uh, that you care about and uh, or who you know is going through something very important that we, we pray for each other. So that's the conversation I had with Mutale Mwanza around, her, around motherhood and also her reality show. Another female I got to uh, interact with was... The one and only Cleo Ice Queen. So with Cleo Ice Queen, we spoke about culture. 
Yes, we spoke about culture, dressing, and where we're coming from, really, as, as, as Africans, which we must be able to embrace. Claire is quite intelligent, and you can tell from this interview. But I feel like, you know, when you have somebody like a gymnast or a yeah. ballerina, and mm. they're going to work, they're not going to go and do their gymnastics in a chitenge or oh, in, yeah. in a trousers, you know. Every career has an outfit. So for me, I like to have my music side of things. I mean, look at me. This is me every day, mm, you know. Mm. Um, this is normal Clementina Mlinga or Cleo <laughs> Ice Queen for this interview. Yeah. But with this outfit, I can do your interview. Yeah. I can go and attend another meeting for my, for my formal stuff. Yeah. But if you catch me on stage, you, can't, you will not catch me in this outfit. Mm. So I think of it as a swimmer. When they're going to swim, they put on their costume and they jump into the pool. A performer, you can't expect them to wear your everyday clothes. The whole point of being a performer is that you've got a costume that separates you from the audience. When people look, they're like, who is that? That's a performer. She's going to jump on stage. She's going to do her thing. She's attracting attention to us. She's the star of the show. We're launching her music video. So you have to put on your costume to do your job. When you go into the mines, you put on your costume. You put on your hat. You put on your overalls or whatever it is that you wear. It's like that with every career. Everybody has a costume. So let's not judge artists or performers when they put on their costume to get on stage to entertain you. Weren't you entertained? <laughs> Did you not like the outfit? Yeah. You know, so I knew that the outfit was risque. And even when I first tried it on, I was like, I can't wear this on its own and, and have it see through. Mm. It's just a little too much. So I was like, either I wear a black jumpsuit inside, a white one, or a nude one. I said, if I wear a nude one, it will still look nude yeah and then i was like a white one will at least contrast it'll show that listen she's wearing uh, something but i feel like the optic illusion of the glitters and where they were placed mm -hmm. is what probably deceived a lot of people but i noticed a lot of sharp icy gangs are like i see you mommy you're fully yeah. dressed you're fully covered but you know it's an artistic expression so uh, how, how do you also reconcile that for people in the entertainment business because Zambia is still a very conservative country. You, 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 even if you have that as a brand on stage, off stage, yeah. but you still have people who have all these expectations and yeah. th that never leaves some people in, in this country. So how do you manage to balance that, especially for a brand like yours, which is not just within the country? Yeah. I think it's normal for people to have expectations mm. and I appreciate that our country is a conservative country. We are who we are, so let's embrace that. You know, but um, like I said, it's just a matter of these little things that we do to push the boundary to, to bring, if we're not going to be exposed as a nation and say, like, not everybody's going to be able to travel, not everybody's going to be able to have access to certain things. So we learn through each other. We are yeah. we're getting exposure through each other. There's something I can learn from you, Chumweka, mm -hmm. which I never knew before. And I'll be like, oh, really? Is that what they do? And then there's something you can learn from me as well. So let's uh, keep an open mind. Of course, we need to respect our, our culture, our tradition, and all of those things. But there's a place and a time for everything. It's not a Chilanga Mlino. It's a performance. It's a Johnny Walker. It's a global brand. You know, I will be... I, I like to see my brand as a global brand that will be able to sit side by side with Beyonce, to sit side by side with Rihanna, to sit side by side with P. Diddy, with Kanye West, with Jay-Z. So if I view myself as a global brand, even when other brands view me, I have to bring something delightful and exciting to the table that's like, wow, I didn't know Zambians would be able to present themselves in this type of way. So it's, it's a good infusion. Everybody always says, like, when you, when you dress too exposed, they're like, we're losing our culture. But in Western province, it is, mm. our breasts are out. Even, like, before all these cloths came to us with the ships on the seas, mm. what were we wearing? We would grab a leaf and just hide the parts that are necessary. Mm. And even when people talk about, like, Chitenge is our thing. It's actually not. Yes, now we've embraced it as our thing, mm. but in all honesty, what's really ours is gold. What's really ours is diamonds. Because where will you find diamonds and gold? Mm. It's in Africa. What's really ours is emerald. So don't be afraid to adorn your body with the gems that are of your soil. Mm. You know, for me, when I wear my bling bling, I'm like, this is actually African. It's not foreign because I've worn bling bling mm. or I've, mm. I've got some skin showing. That's us. That's our stuff. So we should embrace it. Chitenge comes from um, China. Yeah. 
They manufacture it. They mass manufacture it there. Yes, we might say Congo. They're not manufacturing chitenges in Congo. Tell me about a, a plant, a factory in Congo that's manufacturing chitenges. We're still um, endorsing brands that are coming from outside. So let's be open-minded about what we do and what we say. And even with the, I'll go to the Lusaka July thing. I yeah. don't know if you were going to yes. throw in yeah, that. Yes, definitely. We're but a lot of people were like, it's not royal enough. It's giving Chilanga Mulilo. But uh, so royalty should only be Queen Elizabeth. When I put on a crown, then that makes me royal. Royalty is what we make it. Even just us being African alone, that's our royalty. Go and see our chiefs and, and everything. They said a royal empire of purple or something yeah, like yeah. that. Why do we always quickly translate royal to English or England? Why do we always quickly translate royal to one place? Royal is uh, Eswatini. Royal is just here in, in Western province. Royal mm. is Chitimkulu. Royal is, royalty is what we make it. So you don't have to put on a crown with, with jewels. Like, yes, the jewels are ours, of course. <laughs> so you can. But that's not the only thing that makes you royal. So we need to always switch our mindset and think outside the box. When you think royal here, it is Chilangam Lilo vibes. It mm. is kitchen party vibes. Actually, that's what feels like royalty to us. And this thing of where we embrace a Nigerian culture, a South African culture, that thing shouldn't be looked down upon. Because at the end of the day, that's Africa. We are Africans. We inter interconnect at one point. You are better off embracing Niger, South Africa, East Africa, West Africa, and ourselves as Zambia, rather than embracing English, Western, and Japanese, Indian, or whatever other culture. So let's not look down on ourselves when we embrace a Nigerian accent, or you see a, a Zambian on TikTok doing a South African accent. It's for play, but it's something that will bring Africa together at one point or another. The queen is spitting gems, spitting yes. copper. Absolutely. And, and besides, <laughs> it's interesting how people are talking about royalty with Cleo Ice Queen. Yes. And we're arguing about royalty, really. Yes, the queen herself, Clear Ice Queen, spitting gems. And yeah, she did release a, a song recently, and you know, people have made another version of the Wuda Shuda Kuda, Knock Knock. Will people ever stop with, with, with that and, and, and Cleo? But anyway, conversation for another day. We're still celebrating women, so we're not gonna be negative uh, about them. But she really did speak a lot of facts around really how we embrace culture and how we perceive culture as, as Zambians. And, it's something that we really need to work towards. And part of the conversation was around fashion. Someone who is very passionate about fashion is Ruth Ronnie. Uh, I spoke with her just after the whole Lusaka July uh, controversy last year, her dress and all of that. But uh, there's another side that people get to ignore about her or don't focus much on. Some people, that is. And that's her music side. Apart from being a brand influencer, she's also an artist, a talented artist. And um, she promised more music which we're still waiting for, but let's hear what she has to say again. How do you also manage to keep, keep that balance? Because, I mean, as an influencer, part of the expectations is you drive traffic towards the brands that you, you influence for, and you have to keep the numbers going. That's, that's generally what, what uh, you're also hoping to do as an individual. But how do you manage to keep that balance with getting the numbers and at the same time, uh, not doing something that will really shock people or even chase away clients? Right. Um, for me, personally, I just, I'm just very authentic mm -hmm. to myself. Even in my brand, I'm just myself. So I wouldn't really do anything that is out of character mm. to drive traffic to my brand or anyone else's brand. So it's just... Um, me being myself, really. Yeah. Uh, I, and I try to just, even in my content, in the way I interact, I try to stay true to myself at all times. So if it's not in my character to be doing crazy stuff uh, just for numbers, then I won't do it. Um, I don't know what's the situation with other influencers or brands, but yeah, it's just... I think it's a matter of principles mm. and your own morals as a person. Mm. So that's just something I live by. Mm. And how are you also going about this in terms of directing this, this attention and traction 
towards your music? Because that's one side of you that sometimes people forget. People forget you're an artist. Yeah. Um, I noticed that some of my new followers mm. or fans don't really even know that I'm an artist. Uh, and that's okay. Not everyone can know. And I have, I've been on a break for like a year plus when it comes mm. to music. Mm. But um, I've been working on new music. And I feel like um, in logical terms, now would be a good time for me to like drop a project. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to drop like a half-baked project just because I'm getting that uh, attention or traffic right now um for me music is something very very serious something i'm very passionate about so mm. i need to give myself the time that i need um uh, for me to put out a project when it's ready so um I, I i feel like if your work is good enough you're still going to get the attention that you need whenever you drop your project mm. yeah i just recently also learned that you um you're you're actually on too busy by Chef 187. You featured in the Brock Nolan Kumba album. What was that like? It was, uh, it was an honor because obviously Chef is one of the best artists in the country. Mm. He's very talented. Working with him was a very good experience. Um, I loved, I love the song still. Mm. And I also love the feedback and support that um, I got regarding the song. Mm. So yeah, it's, one of my favorite songs that I've done. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nice. Uh, let's talk about your, your, your partnership, your uh, deal with, with Meta. Firstly, how that came about. How, how did you manage to, to uh, get in touch with them or them get in touch with you rather and securing the deal? Okay. So they got in touch with mm. me. Um, they discovered me and uh, made this proposal to me, uh, proposal to me uh, for me to be one of the creators of Tomorrow. And uh, it was such a great honor. Like I was among the 10 people in Africa that were picked to be one of the creators of Tomorrow. And it's been an amazing uh, journey working with Meta. That's like one of the biggest brands in the world. And yeah, it's, it's a very, very interesting experience. Mm. Yeah. Okay, nice. And uh, I mean, you've gotten to travel with them, getting to, I was just joking with you, and, but I mean, on a serious note, so meaning if, if, I, if I had to get hacked, God forbid also, I can call you, you can call one or two people to help me out. <laughs> with, if I get hacked on Facebook or something. <laughs> I can see what I can do. <laughs> that sounds for me, that sounds like a lot of Zambian oh my men. Oh God. Like I said, I've been mm. working on new music. Yeah. So I will be dropping a couple of projects before this year ends. Okay. Uh, that's something I'm very, very excited about because it's been such a long time since I've dropped like my own project. Yeah. Um, I've also featured on Tilo's album. So I'm excited about that. Mm. And then I'm um, still going to be doing a lot of brand uh, work, brand influencing. And um, yeah, that's, that's just pretty much it. Uh, I'm sure there'll be more, but it's, uh, it's a very exciting end of the year uh, that's coming up for me, mm. especially because of the music. Yeah. Yeah, so Ruth, we're still waiting for that more music. You said more, more, more music, more music. We're still waiting for, for that. Let's see how this is going to work for uh, 2024. But she is one of the guests we've had, the female guests we've had. And the promise, at least for me, I'll try my best to, con to, to stick to the, to the commitment when you say you're going to do something and carry on with it. And that is with having more females on the show. So we're going to work with that uh, as we end Women's Month today. Tomorrow? Tomorrow is Fool's Day. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. But anyway, tonight, don't forget to look out for uh, a special Easter Sunday show, a Resurrection Sunday show, His Reason show, with Wadi Michael, Chichi Daisy, and Wellington Kasonde. And uh, here's what you can look out for tonight. Resurrection. New life and hope arising. Join us this year on this Easter special on Diamond TV. 
This year is going to be lots of fun and games. I encourage you to buckle up because it's going to be a very interesting show. It's channel 271 on DSTV and Go TV channel 20. Catch us live on Facebook as well at Diamond TV Zambia. We cannot wait to host you. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. So all that and more as you stay tuned to uh, Diamond TV conversations with Dr. Dora also coming up. Costa also coming up later tonight. So it's uh, a Sunday best on a resurrection Sunday as you stay tuned. And this is where On the Table ends for today. Look out for next week's guest. Any guess who that is? Mm -hmm. Find out next week Sunday at 17 hours. My name is Jumega. I'll simply Jumega. Enjoy your week. <laughs>